Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. In this episode, I want to sort of take the baton from the episode from uh, News Nation Now, anchored by Brian Enton, where he talks about will the laundry parents be charged as accessories? And the area that I want to talk about is the gunshot wound, the, the fact that the authorities were able to establish that it was self-inflicted and and that it was a gunshot wound at all, and how were they able to actually put the puzzle pieces together to figure this out if so little of the remains remained, right? So we're going to talk about that, dealing with a peer-reviewed study and dealing with um, a very interesting aspect in terms of um, ballistics and the um, and statistics as well. Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do like, share, leave a comment, and let's get started. So one of the things that uh, I noticed in, in terms of this particular interview was the question that came up near the end of it, and I will put a link to it in the description, where Brian Enton makes the very, very valid point, did the FBI not have a duty to inform the public that a known fugitive technically, if not officially wanted in connection to a murder, was out there on the loose and armed, right? The FBI had this knowledge. Um, wasn't it, it their duty to inform the public? And what is interesting is he asked the FBI agent who was a guest on his show, a former FBI agent, former FBI agent Jennifer Coffendaffer, and she was basically defending the FBI, saying that, you know, the FBI didn't really need to tell the public because Brian, everything was being done to contain the situation. Um, massive resources were being brought to bear on the Colton Reserve, and so they kind of had the matter in hand. Uh, I'm not sure I agree with that. Um, I think it is entirely conceivable that Brian could have been anywhere, and if he was armed, things could have really gotten out of hand, right? Uh also, somebody who is suicidal is by definition a danger to not only themselves, but others as well. A lot of mass shooters are also suicidal and can cause a lot of damage to people and infrastructure in a short period. And so I think there is actually a duty to um, inform the public. Whether there's a legal duty is perhaps another question. So... I also agree with the other guest, Lawrence Koblinski, that the cranium would likely be sufficient if they just, um, in terms of the partial skull that was found, if they just found a fairly significant part of the cranium, even half of the cranium, cranium even a third, that would likely be sufficient to show the impact of a gunshot, not necessarily the entry wound, but possibly the uh, exit or just the trajectory of the of the bullet. And so um, when we are assuming that the part that was recovered was from the portion of skull where the barrel was pointed, but it's not necessarily the case. You can also have, it can, it's also conceivable that a bullet fragment could leave idiosyncratic artifacts on bone on the inside of the skull. And um, that would very much depend on the ballistics, on the type of bullets used, the type of um, the, you know, the, the power of the um, munitions used. And at this point, we don't really know what, what the type of weapon was that was missing. Another thing is, if you can match the missing gun from the laundry home to the ballistics found in the skull, then you obviously have a very clear um, indication of how this happened and and who is who who likely pulled the trigger because the gun would have belonged to a laundry right um it's quite interesting that during the interview uh koblinski noted that chris laundry brian's father owned about 10 different handguns and apparently when police searched and seized them on september 17th one of them was missing. He's not 100% sure or clear to say that, um, you know, th this missing gun was Chris Laundry's or that of all the weapons in the laundry home, 
um, one was missing. I think it is clear that one was missing. I'm not sure if it's 100% clear that it was a gun owned by Chris Laundry. That's also kind of a, a interesting area. I think that also raises the interesting question, was Brian Laundrie's father not aware that a gun was missing? And I think it's possible that he was aware and also that he communicated this to the authorities, but that the authorities sat on that information, that they didn't communicate that to others. And that then brings us to this very interesting area of a peer-reviewed study. I'll put a link to that in the, de in the description. It involved 432 male suicides and 47 females, but by far the majority of entrance wounds were through the right temple, 67%. That's almost 7 out of 10 suicides, almost 70% through the right temple. So obviously a right-handed individual raising the, um, the, the weapon to the right temple and using that, that mechanism. And that was followed by the mouth at 16%, forehead at 7%, left temple 6%, and then submental, which is uh, the neck area at 2%, and then other regions. I, I also think that this puts into perspective the unlikelihood that Van Gogh committed suicide given that he was shot through his abdomen, which is just such a tiny fraction of a percent of, of typical suicides. Far less than 1% of suicides are to regions of the body besides the head, certainly based on this study. So the trajectory of the wound and not just the site of the wound would likely indicate the likelihood of a self-inflicted wound. I know there have been quite a few people who just can't make sense of the sort of lack of information, like how on earth can you um, make these inferences based on almost no evidence, but in fact you can. So for example, if you've got the fragment of the cranium and you can trace the trajectory of the, of the bullet, you can also... Um, you can also get an impression of what the angle was of the hand that was holding the weapon and through that you can make another inference which is that the hand was likely the hand of the of the victim of the person who took his own life does that make sense i also thought it was interesting what brian enton's guest said on the banfield show um, about the possibility of Brian's parents facing charges. Uh, Kobolinsky referred to them possibly aiding and abetting, and to him it seemed fairly clear that that seemed to be the case, or that somebody seemed to be assisting Brian. And the FBI agent also seemed to be quite clear and unambiguous that um, the FBI were doing almost what you'd expect in this case, um, keeping information close to their chest. Why? Because because of this likelihood of um, uh, the invest well not only the investigation continuing, but this likelihood of further charges being brought. And she actually referenced two specific charges: one for accessory after the fact, and another for I believe it was potential obstruction of justice. So this case is ongoing. Um, it's still not over yet. Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time.